yeah, I'm, I'm going to start off this video by saying that I'm not comfortable uh, uh, comfortable at all by talking about Lars Kulin, uh, really. I'm far, far from an expert on this subject and I know there's so many people out there, um, jazz musicians, jazz experts, people who write for jazz and music magazines that should talk about Lars Kulin. So uh, who am I to to talk about him? The only facts I have about the guy is this book that I just read, which is fantastic. Jazz Amour Affair, unfortunately in, in Swedish, but uh, and very hard to get your hands on. But there is uh, a new book in Swedish that is just published. Uh, so that's why I take my my f the few facts I know uh, about Lars Kulin. Uh, that and obviously enjoyed uh, his music for many years but especially the last six months maybe uh, since getting the book reading about him diving deep into his catalog but this is about the box set so here we go I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This is why we're here. This is why I'm doing this video. I need you, the YouTube people um, that Googles this or YouTube this Lars Gulin, Lars Gulin box set, Lars Gulin on vinyl, I don't know, I don't care, uh, to know about this box set because this is cheap and it's full blown with fantastic music. But now we're going a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's start out from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going out on a limb here, I think. But um, to me, Lars Gulin is probably the top five jazz musicians ever come out of Sweden. And, and that's not saying uh, that little because Sweden has a huge tradition of um, developing and, and growing great jazz musicians. So Lars was born up in Sweden uh, in 1928 and he started off playing the clarinet in young age and he really mastered the instrument when he was into the was sent into the army but at age 21 he switched the instrument to the baritone saxophone the instrument that he is world renowned and known for uh, alongside maybe uh, Gary Mulligan as one of the most important baritone saxophone uh, players ever in jazz history. So fast forward to the 50s, he's playing with the who's who of not only the Swedish guys in jazz, but also many of the international uh, known musicians in the day. Just to give you some examples, I think that he played with um, Charlie Parker when he visited Stockholm and I know that he uh, played and befriended uh, Chet Baker uh, for many years. But just as Chet Baker um, Lars Gullin was a drug, a drug addict and um, like many musicians from this time period, he was hard to, to work with. That I've read in a book. Uh, I haven't played with him, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, what is known is that live dates and um, recording sessions grew further and further in time. So people didn't book him as often as they did uh, prior to his, uh, like when the drug addiction got really bad. So so if you want to explore Lars Gullin and this time period, um, you should check out these records. The first one is this one. This is the artistry by uh, Lars Gullin, which is a fantastic record. One that I don't have in my collection uh, that I wish I had. I think there were a thousand pressed maybe and each one each and every one and i have this confirmed is hand signed by uh, Lars Gullin so you also get a signed copy if you have one of these but two other records i i urge you to get actually is these two these are compilations from the 50s the one uh, the first one is Danny's Dream and the other one is Manchester Fog very cheap affordable records but so damn high on music quality you get the of the best of Lars Gullin right here but not only Lars Gullin all the players that he played with are uh, insanely good at this time period okay so yeah this is what we're here to talk about. This is Lars Gullin, the EMI years 1964 to 1976. The entire catalogue of what he produced for EMI 
at this stage. And this is super affordable. You can get this. I paid 30 euro for this. You can pay, you, you can get this for like 30, 40 or maybe 50 euro. But what you get is just fantastic. Take a look here. So as you can see, it's not much uh, of a box set really. It's it's like seven LPs, uh, sort of an insert or a small booklet uh, in a box. That's it. Uh, but it's seven records from his EMI days. Um, you get an illustration of the man in the front, and and uh, the nice booklet is also written by the same guy who who have done the the book that I that I showed you in the beginning. Okay, so the records that you see in the box, and I'm going to show you the original artwork here. You don't get it in the box, the original artwork, but here it is, and I'm reading here on the back side of the of the box. Here we go, portrait of my pals, and this is probably one of the best Swedish jazz records ever recorded. I think most of you jazz experts out there agree with me it's insanely good uh, you also get Lars Gullin at Gyllene Cirken uh, live from 1964 you get Lars Gullin live from 1969 <coughs> Jazz Amour Affair uh, 1970-271 Like Grass and this is Lars Gullin on piano he's a baritone saxophonist but he was great on the piano also so you get that uh, from 1973 Blues Port 1974 and <coughs> the last one Oros Aromatic Atomica Suite 1976. That's all the records you get uh, from this one. If you're gonna buy them separately, uh, it's more than 30, 40, or 50 euro. Uh, take my word for it. So sadly, uh, Lars Kulin passed away in 1976, only 48 years old, uh, and died way too soon. Um, tragically, by health issues and leaving behind a wife and two kids and his son Peter Gulin was a great great uh, saxophone player and did uh, actually become a name uh, in the Swedish jazz scene but he also died tragically only 46 years old uh, from cancer so uh, both very tragically but his uh, his daughter is still Active. She's 66 years old today and she's a arranger and a composer, I think. I mean, his legacy can't be celebrated enough. And his compositions, his way of playing and maybe also the extravagant way of his, his way of living has influenced numerous uh, and, and, and countless Swedish musicians but also international musicians. So Lars Gullin will live on through his music and the world should be very grateful for what he left behind, uh, this rich culture's treasure um, and inspiring new musicians um, through this day. So, so that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, my short video about Lars Gullin and the box set in, um, in particular. Uh, do the research about the man, listen to his music and if you like this please subscribe and um, all that stuff and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!